Hi cutie! Today we're gonna go on a journey. If you don't know who I am, hello, I am Cordy. I am also known as Stephanie Gillis, the author of the Ashport Archives. These are my books. There's three of them and a fourth. <laughs> There's three of them I can count. There's actually four, but three out and one is coming and that's the final book in the series. And today I thought, why not share my experience self-publishing my books and the mistakes I've made along the way, some advice for new writers who are looking to do self-publishing or traditional publishing as well. Granted, I don't have much advice on traditional publishing, but I can tell you a little bit about it. But I kind of wanted to show how these books came to be. It was a very long journey and why not talk about it outside in the horrible heat with traffic and hor the sun and you know why not make bad decisions in a video where I talk about bad decisions I made in making my books. Yeah I think that loans me a lot of uh, credibility. Let's go back to the very, very beginning, once upon a midnight dreary, the concept of Ashport came about when I had come back from Japan uh, in 2013. That is when I started writing the first book of Ashport. And it was a very different story then, had a lot of different concepts for what it was going to be, but I was very lost because I had just spent three years as an English teacher in Japan. My entire life was up to up until that point had been Japan, 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 Japanese culture, Japanese language, filming all my videos about Japan. And I wasn't intending to leave Japan at the time that I came home. I came home um, for a tragedy that happened and I didn't know what I was gonna do. I had no idea what my future held. Now, I've been writing since I was a kid. I, I love creating stories, but for the most part, all those stories were just for me. I also very rarely finished anything. I would start an idea and then I would write the beginning and then I'd get another idea and I'd start that one. And so I have a collection of like 300 different ideas for stories that uh, have never seen the light of day and probably will never see the light of day. When I came back, I was jobless for a long time and I thought, you know what, now is the time that I at least have my family supporting me. I can try to delve into this world of writing and publishing. I did eventually get a job. I wasn't just leeching off of my family entirely. Actually, for that year, I ended up not working at all uh, because I just could not find anywhere to work. It was a really bad time. I mean, Rao was a really bad time too, to be looking for a job, but definitely was a bad time in 2013 for me. To the point where I ended up going back to Japan as an English teacher in a private company um, the following year and that's a whole other another disaster story and kind of why I'm back in the US again. Anyway, back to 2013. I knew of NaNoWriMo. I, I participated in NaNoWriMo in 2012. That was my first one. I did write my first book and finished a book with it. It's a terrible, terrible book. I will never publish it. It is horrendous. It was a good first experiment with NaNoWriMo, but I do find that NaNoWriMo is very motivating and I like it a lot and I participate in all the camps and all the official nanos all year round. So this year I will be doing uh, July. I, this video might actually be coming out in July. I'm filming it in June, by the way. Hi, it's June right now. I will be participating in July Camp NaNoWriMo and working on the fourth book in the series for it, actually. But in 2013, I was alone. I was lost. I didn't know what to do until this kind of idea popped into my head. I think it actually came to me while I was walking my dogs and listening to Arashi. I think specifically I was listening to Spiral by Arashi because it's a very creepy vibe of a song and I really enjoy it. So if you haven't heard that song, go check it out. Arashi's finally on YouTube now, even though they're retiring, but um, Arashi is one of the Japanese bands that I have been a fan of for a long time. So I was listening to that while walking my dogs and this kind of concept came to my mind about you know, having a smorgasbord of creatures living together in a house. And it went through several different stages until the character of Levin kind of developed and my Phoenix mythology, because this entire series is based on Phoenix mythology and kind of tweaking hist like historical records, I mean, it's mythology, but in developing my own 
mythology, you say that word a lot, for the phoenix. And that's where the concept of these books come in. The first book, it was more so developing all of the core characters, the whole gang of Ashport. Because I felt so lonely, which is now, this is becoming a depressing video, but I was so alone. I didn't really have friends when I came back because all the friends that you know you make in high school and college and stuff, everybody's off living their own lives or most of my friends uh, lived in another state or another country and I was very much alone here so I wanted to create a world that had a found family and with all these different people from different backgrounds coming together and finding what family means together and that's one of the core themes of Ashport is having is this found family. That's kind of where I started writing it so I joined NaNoWriMo in 2013. I wrote this book, I wrote, I did my 50,000 words for it. I did not finish writing the first draft, I think until December, because I, it's more than 50,000 words. I think it's like 98,000 words, if memory serves. I'm just under the 100K. I let it sit for a very long time. Ashbor, or Search for the Phoenix, did not get published until 2016. When I came back from my horrendous job, I came back in uh, October of 2015, uh, from the horrendous job that I had that kind of ruined a lot of my life and I was back here I ended up getting a job at PetSmart and just really sinking into that deep depression and I thought you know what I want to do something and that something was I want to publish a book and so I started editing Ashport granted I knew nothing and I did very little research I mean, I did research, but not nearly as much as I should have about how books come about. And I did all the editing for myself. I did all the formatting myself. The only thing I did not do was my cover art, which my sister did. She came up with the cover art, actually. She was doing watercolors in the middle of a snowstorm in Baltimore and was just playing with mythical creatures. And I said, hey, make a phoenix. And there we are. I really, really love it. I love my covers a lot and I hope you guys like them too because I think they're really pretty and my sister does really good art. She's a very talented artist. I'll never say that to her face though. She's my sister, ew, gross. So I went around looking for what were the places to do self-publishing and just so that I could have the book. I wasn't really thinking long-term goals in uh, you know, becoming a world famous author or things like that. I just wanted to say, hey, I wrote a book and I want to share it with my friends and family. I found Create Space. It was between Create Space and Lulu, and I liked Create Space better because it automatically, you know, put it on Amazon and stuff. Um, and it was a really easy platform to work with and a really easy means of formatting. They gave you a template to format it correctly. That was really nice. And so I really liked utilizing those things that I did everything myself. And this is where the bad mistakes happen is in doing that, I, you know, you miss typos, you miss getting feedback before publishing, and I really wish I could go back in time and make myself reach out more to the community because I wasn't in any real community to find support and find guidance. So for new authors out there, find your communities. I'm going to link a bunch of Facebook groups that I am participating in now that support authors that have resources for finding beta readers and critique partners and stuff. That's one that I really, really enjoy being in and connecting with other people. I now have a really good group of author tubers that I am always talking with and they're kind of like my new besties and we support each other a lot. I mean, you guys have seen my streams where they have come on and I'll gush about their books a lot. I really like the community I found now. I did not have that community when first publishing really the first these these books here. I'm in most of this by myself. These books did get beta read just by my friend and they were very helpful with their critiques and with their editing skills but I didn't pay for like a professional editor because they're so expensive and I don't want anyone to feel bad about not being able to afford an editor but having multiple eyes on your story will help reduce the amount of typos because yes even to this day I know there are a few typos still in the first book I've re-released it a few times but 
there's a point where I now, where the way that Amazon KDP uh, Kindle Direct Publishing works, where I now have like a bunch of different iterations of this and it's very confusing and it won't let me delete old ones. <laughs> and I'm very frustrated by that. Anyway, CreateSpace no longer exists. By the way, it's completely absorbed into Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Hello, butterfly. There is a swallowtail butterfly hanging out here. There it is. Hi. Oh, I don't think you see it. Oh, no, come back. Maybe my crows will show up. I've been collecting crows. Wait. No, that's counting crows. <laughs> okay, so as Ashport came about, I realized it was a series and I wanted to make more of it. And that's where book two really comes to play. Book two is actually my favorite of the series. Shh, don't listen. It's okay. It's okay, guys. It introduces a character that I really, really like, and I wanted to start doing a little bit better and looking into better ways to market. Granted, again, marketing can be very expensive, and I am very poor. I work at PetSmart. That doesn't pay so much um, to afford these things. One of the things I see in the author world is that most of the authors you'll see in like their little bios are like they'll have lives with their you know significant other their kids and stuff and they have a very seemingly stable life and granted this is all through the mirror of or the the screen of success I'm, I'm not one of those authors i don't really have anybody to really support me other than my parents and they're not rich so i can't really do that to them so with marketing every now and then i've tried to delve into paying for ads and stuff like that. But the best thing that I think that's done for me is going to conventions and finding conventions in my area. Granted, this might not be a thing for you if your state doesn't really host a lot. And also, it's a pandemic right now. So every convention that I planned for this year, minus the two I went to in January, they're all gone. They're all canceled. I have no further means of going to conventions and making money there by selling my books. And I tend to do fairly well at conventions, not to like toot my own horn, but I like to talk and I'm very friendly and <laughs> I think I have good covers that entice people to come to my booth. I, that's where I like doing my marketing because it's so personal. You can talk to people, you can learn their stuff, you can make great friends. I've made really good friends now from just showing them my books and now I can read their books and we've exchanged and I've met some great people at conventions that are a really great resource for people, especially if you're looking into the community in your area. I am pretty sad that all these conventions I was planning on go to, like I was gonna go to BookCon this year. I was really excited about going to BookCon, but that is canceled. Mile High Con is going virtual this year and I'm not sure how that's going to work. Fort Collins Comic Con as well, but all these conventions that I normally go to have been canceled and it's really sad that this year is gonna be very hard for a lot of authors, especially indie authors out there in marketing because a lot of marketing happens at conventions, at least for me and I know a few other authors that really rely on conventions. Anyway, hopefully when this pandemic ends, you'll be able to have more opportunities there. With the rest of marketing, I don't have a lot of advice because it's something I'm still learning a lot about. I've kind of wanted to keep Ashport smaller and just a self-publishing while I'm working on traditional publishing for different series. So my newer book, which that, I, that I'm working on, is something that I wanna try to do traditional publishing with. And I'm gonna go through the stages of that with you guys, hopefully once I've finished having a nice draft and stuff, but I do plan on doing a kind of blog series in the process of publishing through traditional publishing. We'll see how it works, but that is in the cards for me right now. We'll see how that goes. I do intend to finish this series before moving forward with that, um, just because I feel really bad for how long it's taken me to do the fourth book and I need to finish it. So in summary, if you are a new author who's looking for advice or looking for communities and stuff to join to help you grow as an author, please check out all the links in my description. And you can always reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, definitely reach me here on YouTube. You think you can reach me on my Ko-fi page as well. And if you want to support me as a content creator, you can check out that Ko-fi page. I do have a shop now and you can actually buy the books there along with um, some other fun things that you can check out on my Ko-fi page. But that's essentially my self-publishing journey with Ashport. 
it has a really strange beginning that I never even really contemplated traditional publishing to start with because I just wanted it here and now. Everybody's publishing journey is a little bit different than the next, but that's mine. And if you have more questions about it, go ahead and reach out to me and we'll chatty chat. But I definitely encourage other author tubers out there to talk about their publishing experiences because they're really eye-opening in that a lot of different methods for getting published are out there. So good luck to all of you writers out there looking to be published for your first time and good luck to the writers who've already been published and are gonna do more in the future. That is about it. Check out my books if you want to read something about some original Phoenix mythology with a ragtag group of mythological misfits that band together in their little found family. It has a lot of LGBT rep and POC rep in it so check it out. Main character is Ace, by the way. Japan actually does feature in this as well because it was written at the time that I came back and I was really missing Japan. And I, I love using a big expansive world for, for my books. So if any of those things interest you, check them out. That's how I market apparently, not very well. I will see you next time cuties, bye. So I'm out here in the garden. Uh, I just want it known that I did not plant any of these. This is all my sister's doing. This is all her. I cannot plant things to save my life. I have fake plants in my room.